Thank you for sticking with us, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our second best of three series of the night coming up. The inaugural coverage continues on, and now we have Myth Trust versus Titan facing off in a BO3. Gods, there's no D2L bet for this, but over under, well, what would you give it? Who's Ooh. got the uh, the edge? Who are the fan favorites coming in here? Um, fan favorites would be Titan. I think most people would expect Titan to take this series. I'd say maybe like 65%. 35% okay. would be quite right. But Mistrust, these teams go back way back. They've been versing each other in the Southeast Asia region for as long as I can remember. You can go back like <laughs> eight, nine years and these teams were playing against each other. Not under yeah. the name of Titan. Uh, Mistrust has been around that long, but uh, formerly on RNG Sports, formerly on other Malaysian teams, these right. two teams have a really long-standing rivalry. Okay, so should be interesting. I'm excited. I got to cast Titan a little bit in WPC, and uh, they're a, a team that... Doesn't disappoint. I'm a bit of a Yamate fan myself, so uh, ne okay. never disappointed when I get to uh, see them in a matchup. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, hop into our draft here. And, um, well, things looking fairly predictable in terms of uh, what these Chinese teams are into. Titan will grab Nature's Prophet and Ancient Apparition to get things kicked off. And Myth Trust will open with the Centaur first pick and a second pick, wow. Sand King. And even the initial bands looking pretty straightforward. Ember Spirit Invoker, Lycan, Batrider, four very scary heroes. Yeah, all expected bands, the picks as well. Titan really like their Nature's Prophet, and the Centaur has kind of become that go to straight up first pick worthy offlane hero when you can get him. Uh, mm -hmm. Mistress, you get the Sanking with him, which I guess Ten is probably the Sanking, I think, worthy of being picked up in the early stage, but it kind of fills the similar role to the Centaur. So yeah. I don't think remaining. it was as essential for Mistress to get him, but they're going to prioritize heavily on the, the team fight. And Sanking also Reserve good at dealing time. with Nature's Prophet. Once you have that Blink Dagger, you can actually catch him out, break the distance really well, combine it with a Centaur Stampede uh, on top of that. Yep, and I'm I'm embarrassed that I can't remember. Who is it on Titan? Is it Ohio's Nature's Prophet that does that cheeky, like, early on, he'll, Radiant like, uh, team TP team. up to, into the uh, the cliff jungle and do all sorts of um, yep. all, right. all sorts of crafty work with that Nature's Prophet. He certainly does have a slightly different play style, and not surprised to see Titan prioritizing that Fury on. And we're kind of at that point where there's only so many scary heroes that you can ban out, and some of them have to slip through. Remaining. And Titan, like most other teams right now, have been enjoying themselves some Five Ancient Apparition uh, quite a bit. They will go ahead and ban out the Shadow Shaman, and um, hmm, Myth time. Trust will ban out Naga as well as the Faceless Void. So Void does pair pretty well with Ancient Apparition. Chronosphere makes for pretty easy Ice Blast, and Naga, well, just a, a hero that Radiant nobody really wants to deal pick. with. So Titan, more focused on banning out supports, uh, trying to limit the scary pairings with that Sand King. Both Rasta as well as the Shadow Demon work pretty well in those uh, that kind of early ganking squad. So, yeah, it's a bit surprising to see a Shadow Demon ban. I wonder if Titan are yeah. expecting to pick something up that maybe gets countered by that. Or if you look towards like melee kind of carries like Life Sealer who can get purged, mm -hmm. defensive disruptions. Ten but it is an interesting remaining. ban from Titan. Uh, and today it's just a ban, so it's not like it's something to look at like overanalyze. But remaining. I still think it's just not something yeah. you normally see most teams. Definitely play. not a hero we see banned very frequently. That Reserve is a, a a true statement for sure. Now Titan did have. The luxury third pick. So I'm always a little surprised to see a, a scenario like this where they have an Ancient Apparition in one of the first two picks, and then they have first third pick, but they're the team to ban out the Rasta. Uh, they could have left him in the pool and just scooped him up themselves, and uh, the AA-Rasta combo has been a very popular support duo. But um, something tells me they're going to grab a Rubik here. I don't know why, but I just I feel it in my bones. I'm like the uh, the old lady for the Titan. Phantom Menace. Uh, yeah, for Titan. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, off the mark. Vengeful Spirit, but... Dyer Still exciting. Team. Rubik AA does work really nice. It's a really strong support combo, but VS AA, similar story. Yep. Uh, the VS stun versus the Rubik Telekinesis, kind of similar things. Uh, telekinesis does no damage, but it's a slightly more reliable stun. Can't be disjointed, dodged, is instant. So both combos have a lot of killing power. And that's something Titan really emphasized in the early game is strong rotations, getting early ganks, winning the early game laning stage. Titan, almost every single game you see him, will have will look to outlane their opponents and not worry too much about remaining. the mid to late game because they, they their mentality is, look, if we win the early game, we'll get far enough ahead Five that we can win remaining. regardless of our lineup. That's kind of uh, like, I, I think of Sigma or old Sigma, uh, as it were, um, with a sort of a similar play style when they used to run that bane Marana combo a lot. Just look for a team say, wow, they don't have a lot of carry power, but they dominate the lane so hard that even though they don't have a traditional hard carry, they can still carry that momentum into the mid game. And um, yeah, Titan definitely kind of fit the bill for that. Um, <clears throat> similar play style, although maybe could make a case that Titan execute uh, a little bit better. But Mythtrust will take their time with their third pick here. I'm going to burn some of that bonus time. 
And um, they still have a lot of options. A pretty pretty open-ended draft. Uh, their two heroes are not particularly telling. Centaur in the offlane and uh, support Sand King somewhere doing some Sandstorm in the jungle. Nothing too crazy. And, and anytime I see uh, Titan, sort of like a deny pick Sand King more than anything. Net is yeah, the uh, he, he's the master of the trees on that Sand King. So if you ca if you can run Sand King and you can stop Net from getting him, that makes him more of a value pick, yeah. I think. <laughs> Double whammy in, yeah. in, in terms of that. But we'll see what Mythtrust look to get here. I'd say traditionally Mythtrust, their style of play has always been super heavy team fight centric. They love to pick up okay. tons of AOE. Uh, and really just make sure that they have the best possible team fight. And often you'll see Mythras down, good chunks of gold, and getting out farm, but Radiant they turn team. games around with big team fights. They go Wisp here. I don't think... I don't know if I've <laughs> ever seen Mythras play Wisp. It's like, can we pull up some I stats up, uh, right, right, right quick here and see how I'm often sure they play I'm sure there's been Wisp. like a couple, but I don't remember casting it, and it's definitely not never been a go-to hero of theirs. This is... It's unusual, a, to say the least. Yeah, let's take a gander here. Hero stats. And Ten seconds remaining. So overall, in their entire career, uh, they remaining. have played EO in 13 out of 200 matches. Let's check this patch Reserve and see if they've played him recently. Hmm. Yeah, on 6.8, they've played Wisp 11 times, okay. and uh, they are seven and four. They've got about a 64% win rate. So. Been playing a bit they've they've been running a little bit of wisp action. It's, well, de tiny deny Dyer pick from team. Titan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Talk about denying the sanking. You see that wisp pick? You're like, well, can we fit a tiny? <laughs> can we fit a tiny? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do a tiny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this. So Thanks. interesting. Now I'm curious how they'll actually lane this. Will this be like tiny mid? Will this just Probably be safe lane, lane tiny yeah. position one with a? I mean, that's a pretty scary yeah, try Yamate used to play a lot of solo mid tiny. I like, go back mm -hmm. to Dota 1 days when tiny was that like, arcane, Ten blink dagger, remaining. four staff, dagon type tiny. But right. that's no longer how he's played. So I think more likely it's a carry Five tiny. Dagon remaining. tiny. Jeez. That, that does go be, back a ways. That <laughs> build. That was build that. <laughs> yeah. Ty it's, it's hard for tiny to go mid. It's one of those, if he gets a little bit of momentum, it can be devastating. Uh, kind of like that Fnatic uh, Na'Vi game that was making headlines uh, yesterday. Uh, sort of similar to that, where he can really snowball out of control. I actually only caught the tail end of that game, but uh, I can Ten only imagine how the early game went. Uh, Myth Trust, they won't get Radiant their tiny, but they'll back. get one of the other classic EO pairings, uh, and they'll grab the Chaos Knight. A classic combo, but uh, to be honest, gods, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the Chaos Knight. Oh, he's, I, he's pretty garbage. He's here. pretty garbage? Okay, good. I'm he's glad we're only, on the same. He's only ever viable with a Ten Wisp on your team, and even then, he's kind of like... like eh. You'd much rather have a Tiny. You'd rather ha I would say you'd rather have a Luna. You'd rather, I'd rather have, have an Ursa. If Ursa, it was, Sven. Like, I, yeah. could, I could just list here is that you'd rather have an CK time. with a Wisp. Mm -hmm. I think CK was just over-nerfed in that one, in some patch. It's... The uh, the one where they, they like equalized his stuff where it's like the the that damage of reality of rift I mean, that that, that patch though right that was that was the one where he had all those changes yeah that yeah, wasn't okay. entirely a nerf when they kind of equalized his damage versus stun yeah. duration on the stun but oh yeah that was it it was uh, yeah, what what how did they nerf him actually what was the big the big nerf Radiant that crippled team. CK I'm trying to think what they've done in the past. Yeah. I don't know. There's no easy answer to that. Well, they, they nerfed the Wisp, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> partly the, what they did. The yeah, the, the tether, since it doesn't slow anymore. Um, um, the drums got made more expensive. I mean, some of it was item-related. It, it was just all... See, he just He's sort of like he doesn't really fit into this meta as well. It's kind of like how Lifestealer used to be your go-to hero for right clicks, and as we mentioned a few times in this cast, in this current meta, Lifestealer is really most potent when he has a good delivery vehicle. That Blink Dagger, Bat Rider, or a, you know, a, a, a Magnus, seconds. or someone that can hop in, and then you can use those Infest Bombs. And that's where he really shines. CK Five has a similar problem, remaining. except he doesn't really have Infest to make up for the lack of his yeah. just kind of... He, he's, it's not his meta. Reserve that's kind of the way I think about it. It's not that CK is particularly weak. It's just um, not where remaining. he really shines in this meta game. But, oh boy. Morphling the final pick for Titan, but Queen of Pain comes out for Myth Trust. So, uh, at the very least, we're going to have an interesting game on our hands here, gods. We're going to see a few heroes that uh, we don't get to see all too frequently. Yeah, I like these two drafts. Some interesting stuff. I don't think either team has a huge edge here. Lakel the other reason I feel like with CK doesn't suit Myth Trust is because Lakels is more known for playing like the true hard carries. The but when he does play like a non-true okay. hard carry, it's something like a Clinks where he can get a lot of farm and really control the game. But as a CK, I'm mm, it can still it can still work, but yeah, I'm not convinced. One of the problems I see with CK is he just 
it takes too much for him to really be a playmaker. He's a, sort of, yeah. uh, once he starts to pick up momentum, he can snowball really well, but if he gets ganked early on, if Wisp struggles and doesn't hit six in a timely manner, if maybe your first or, uh, or second Ten relocate gank remaining. fails, CK is not a great recovery hero. He really doesn't play well from behind, and once he starts to get a little underleveled, a little bit underfarmed, he doesn't have any flash farming mechanism. He has no way to make a really fast recovery. And um, that, that's, that's sort of... I see him almost similar, a similar plight to the Death Prophet, where if you get ahead and you start to snowball, you're crazy, you make the hero like overpowered, but if you start to fall behind, and um, it, it just... How do you recover? He's, yeah, he's not a good recover, but that's where they get the... They're not going to make him a one-call hero. Which yes. Is just, that's 100% no-no. That's never going to work. <laughs> yeah. You get the Queen of Pain with it. The Queen of Pain's not like a true carry. It's more like a... Uh, semi carry kind of more more magic based yeah. carry heroes of sorts uh, as opposed to like a shadow fiend or a morphling that you could put mid but she scales pretty well though she definitely yeah. is uh, scales a really core. well with items yeah. yeah yeah for sure i'd say different to the centaur who doesn't necessarily scale that well with items and is more about the initiation mm -hmm. aspect whereas queen of pain is all about yeah. the damage output the global aspect of stampede is just it, it's just so good uh, you know i, I think so centaur is in a really good place right now and, and again it's interesting to note how he hasn't been changed all that much recently not huge at least and now he just went from kind of a nobody to first pick first ban well not even really banned as much yeah. but pretty much first pick in most games so will be interesting but uh, this is game one of our last best of three for the night guys you're watching the inaugural thank you for joining us we know starlighter is going on right now and the handful of you guys joining us here from the BTS studio in LA, we thank you for keeping uh, keeping us company here. It is, what time is it, gods? It's 6 a.m. here on the Pacific Coast, yeah. and we're still going strong. We've got Titan on our radiant side. X will be on the Ancient Apparition, our boy Extinct here. I kept calling Execration Extinct, so now I get to. Uh, hopefully I won't be calling yeah, the player Execration. <laughs> KYXY on the position one, Morphly down here in the bottom lane. Net will be on the Vengeful Spirit. In the mid, it will be NWP, a.k.a. Yamate on the solo mid, Tiny. And up here in the off lane it'll be ohio on the nature's prophet flashback yamate back on solomid tiny i'm looking forward to this but on the dire side it will be myth trust we're gonna have arba playing the solomid queen of pain in the off lane it will be uh, mr goblik gobiki let me read this one gobjibi gobjibi yep gobjibi i pop up the score but i couldn't quite read what was on my screen but gobjibi on the centaur safe lane trial lane. we've got lakels on the chaos knight tnk on the wisp and then finally it's gonna be boom bell playing the support sand king and right off the bat, the uh, most important thing that happened so far, Titan got in early, blocked off this neutral camp here, the D ward failed. Uh, Mithras saw him come into their jungle, so they knew it was being blocked off, but they couldn't quite get it. Wisp even tried to like tether over, but the sentry's just been misplaced, so... Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they didn't see exactly where Titan put the ward. Yeah. So unfortunately for Yamate, this is not the easiest matchup. Queen of Pain with that dagger, even though it was nerfed a little bit in that uh, last patch where now it's uh, it's equalized on the mana. So at the early levels, it's a little bit less efficient. In the later levels, it's a little more efficient. In the laning stage, that is absolutely a nerf, but still very useful against Tiny. And um, well, he did use an avalanche to pick up a couple creep kills, so it, it's leveled out a bit, but not the easiest matchup for him. Yeah, he still managed to get a nice, oh, he just got like Four last hits yeah. under his tower, which is not something you see all yeah, that Just often. as I say that, he, he pulls ahead yeah. and last hits, and now he's doubling the Queen of Pain, yeah. so perhaps not as bad as the it seems. last thing under your tower is like a mix of RNG as well as just like some random timing and aspects that come in, because tower damage is not fixed, so sometimes you get those last hits, sometimes you don't, and Yamate mm -hmm. getting those means he has his bottle. If he doesn't get those, he's like 150 gold short of a bottle and really struggling, but the fact he got those last hits helped him out a ton in this mid lane. Yep, for sure. So we'll keep tabs here and... Just an interesting mid matchup. This really does uh, does take me back to the older Dyer's days of Dota. Go G or Gob GB, maybe getting dove down here in the bottom lane. They do have uh, a nice three range uh, safe lane tri lane here, top. and uh, there's the magic missile chilling touch, and this will be an easy kill. And Ohio joining the battle as well. Actually, Ohio the one to grab the last hit and draw the first blood. So he will be uh, rewarded for his bounty, and already Titan taking this tower down to half health. This is going to be a three-minute tower kill here, gods. Yeah, talk about, talk about these guys just loving this early game dominance. Not just kills and rotations, but towers as well. The fast bassering on KYXY helping out. This does mean they, they, they often get out-leveled in the early game because they'll be grouped up as three, four heroes to get these kills. So they have to be careful they don't fall too far behind them. But there's like Venge AA, not that level dependent. AA wants his level six, but Venge doesn't need too many levels. Morphling's just going to be happy to get the farm, but Morphling does want levels as well, at least later on. Yeah, certainly right. Uh, Ohio also the one to grab wow, the last hit on that tower. Boots. 
So yeah, Ohio's gonna have three minute phase boots here as an offlane nature's profit. That's <laughs> more than you can hope for, I think. Getting the first blood and then the last hit on yeah. a tower kill within the first three minutes. For a second I was like, wait, he's got phase boots with three CS? How does that work? Like phase like tower the the hero kill alone isn't enough, but you yeah. get the tower as well and yep. Bam. I'm surprised he didn't just go rush Midas like with that. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good point, but so hmm. <laughs> Help you pause five thousand bath. I don't. I don't understand. He meant five hundred baht. It's B A H T. Uh, that's the Thai uh, currency. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Ohio, Ohio tried his hardest to to make a funny bit. <laughs> it was still funny just was, for other reasons. It was even better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, gods please don't screenshot. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so how many of the the players in this game have you met uh, IRL gods? Have you met, have you met all of them? Have you had the privilege um, of shaking all their hands? I've met all of Titan. I haven't met all of the Myth Trust players because they've got a slightly new roster. I know TNK, Abba and Lakel. Okay. TNK is a really friendly guy. I'm I'm good friends with him and all the Titan guys are Pretty good buddies of mine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Look, well, look at you, Mister Popular in the SEA region, oh, wow. China slash. Uh... <laughs> I don't know many of the Chinese players. Like I've yeah. cast them in. I've never because the thing is we cast all these Chinese tournaments, but we never actually go to the land. Like they have a land files in China, we actually don't attend. Right, right. We just cast it remotely. So yeah, I've only met so many of the Chinese players. I did get a hug from Burning at the airport on his way back from MLG. Now that is that is luck, I, man. That, that was is... when I was like, I've made it. I'm. I, I can retire happily now. <laughs> Burning gave me a hug. <laughs> as tears went down my cheeks as I boarded my airplane. I was like, cool. Yeah, I, jeez, uh, I'm a little jelly. Yeah. Burning is, you know, the the, what, the first Dota tournament I ever casted was the It's Gosu uh, March Madness or mm -hmm. It's Gosu Monthly Madness, like way back when. It's the first ticket I have on my account. I casted with Kawa, like, y like it was a really long time ago. It was at least a year before I started casting. That Dota was when like the first recently. tournament had even had a ticket as well. Yeah, yeah, it really it was. was. Like, I think it was right. The defense was the first one. That was like the second or third one. Yeah, yeah. Molly got it uh, into the store, and that was uh, you know it was obviously uh, an Asian tournament. And Burning was the the first the first Dota two player that I noticed that I was just like, oh my god, this guy is on another level. He was so I I've, he's just I have that special connection with. I guess a lot of people have that connection with Burning, but. <laughs> So pretty hard or pretty easy to be impressed by Burning because he's such a damn good player. Yeah. But I always just think back at that first tournament. Kyle was like, "Keep an eye out for that Burning guy," and he played anti mage and he just he just trashed whoever the hell they were playing. It was yeah. Mineski or somebody, and it was just like, "Damn." There's yeah. a few players who have that kind of like legend or like god status. Like Burning's called like B God, and there's a few yeah. players in the scene who have that. Thing. Yamate is kind of like that as well. He's he got that. Used to be, or at not, least in not the past. really anymore. But yeah. like, I'd say there's. Maybe in the past he was, but like current day, it's like I would say burning. One of the things Dendi, that like, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I guess yeah, Yamate is not quite. should be one up there. I mean, it's level. it's not all about a, it's also not all about skill. It's also just about the legend and the hype around these players. Right, right. Like that's always been a big case with. I mean, burning obviously. I mean, they all have the skills as well, but like there's mm -hmm. people of comparable skills, but they just don't have the same following or yeah. Or lore behind them, like even like e like e Sama. He's I mean not a god, but he's e Sama. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. got that title there, it's that, so. that brand kind of. Um, um, but th one of the things about Yamate that really impresses me is how diverse of a hero pool he has. I mean, this guy plays a pretty much a yeah. different hero every game, and you know, someone like Burning, he has a, a much smaller pool of heroes that he plays. He plays them really well. You could make a case that he's probably the best anti mage in the world, or was when anti mage was popular, but. Um, you know, Yamate, he's got his signature heroes, but I, I feel like you could give that guy pretty much anything and he can still dominate his lane and be a playmaker. Maybe not anything, but he's he just yeah. a, a huge plays, base of heroes. He's, he very rarely will you see Yamate. He'll never get solo killed or anything like that. He mm -hmm. never loses his Very life. conservative player. Every, yeah, it's every now and then he'll like maybe knock it as much out of a lane as he could because he plays mm -hmm. maybe over-conservative, but you'll never see him getting picked off or punished for over-aggression. Yeah. I remember there was that one game where I, I, I think you were casting with me and the, the Titan were running a Viper mid. Mm -hmm. And the Viper got ganked a few times, and like I, for some reason, I thought it was Yamate playing Viper, and I was thinking in my head like, yeah, Man, normally like Yamate doesn't die like this, and then you told me like, oh, it's Kyxy playing Viper. I'm like, it makes sense all of a sudden because Kyxy, Kyxy is a player who will look to dominate the lane and crush his opponent one v one, like using mm -hmm. his mechanical skills. He'll look to outlast, hit them, harass them out the lane, but 
what the team against them did was they smoke ganked him like two or three times and he got punished for it. Yep. Um, and I, I was thinking like game. this normally doesn't happen to Yamate and yeah. I actually thought it was Yamate for some reason. And then you you like oh no. Yeah. It's, it's I think that right. might have been one of the games where they had picked and then they swapped. You know, like uh, right when the game started okay. and you hadn't realized it. So in your in your head you looked at the loading screen and like oh okay cool. Yeah. KYX or uh, cool or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah Yamate is going mid on Viper, but they uh, they switch it up. But you're right. It, it can. It, it's not all good. There have definitely been uh, games, and uh, I mean, I've only casted Titan in a, a couple of series, mostly in WPC. But times where Yamate's conservatism has worked against them, where you're looking at it and you're like, I'm pretty sure you could have blinked forward and just dropped yeah. your quap ult and just gotten that kill. But he's like, well, I don't know exactly where the other team is. I'm just gonna play it safe, and then he backs out. So it's it's not all peaches and cream, but. There is something to be said for having consistently having that control to be patient and th oh, like always think to myself, where's the other team? If I blink in, will I get punished for this? And um, that's something that not not every player, not every player has. That was oh. that was my last stream. Don't worry. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. I was like, I'm pretty sure I did. For those of you who don't know, the there is a um, there's a second stream going on. The inaugural is not just coming here on BTS One. We got Greg. What is hip casting over on BTS Two? That's Orange vs Execration, one of the Group B matches. So mm -hmm. get your choice of game there if you want to watch some Orange or Execration Dota. But here on BTS One, we got Titan vs Mithra. Love me some Greg Laird. Spent a lot of time getting to know him at uh, Pax East this past weekend, and I can say from personal experience, he's a good guy. But uh, he he. Uh, he sets the bar for negativity. He's one of the most cynical negative people I've ever met. And <laughs> in kind of a good way, in a way that it's almost comical. But uh, okay. fun guy, and yeah, if you guys want to check that out, I certainly would encourage you. It is on uh, BTS2 right now. So, yep. all right, we will resume. We're only four minutes into this game. First Blood did come out for Titan, and as we were talking about to recap, Ohio, he's only got three last hits, but uh, he got the first Blood and the list last hit on that Tier 1 tower. So he's got early phase boots, and he'll head back up to that top lane. Uh, in the mid, Yamate doing very well. I thought he would struggle a bit, but he is 20-7 and seven versus the 12-2 and two Queen of Pain, though uh, Abba is controlling the runes here. Has a haste and will grab uh, this illusion at the 4-minute mark. Abba's going for this like old-school 2-Shadow Strike build, which he often did against Queen of Pain, against melee heroes especially. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not as good. Like, after the Shadow Strike mana cost nerfs, it just doesn't seem as powerful, though. Uh, Tiny just going to bottle Crow. He'll shrug off most of the harass. And I think come mid-game time, he'll wish he didn't get that second point in Shadow Strike. But for now, it yeah. does help him just that little bit more against Yamate in the mid lane. Yeah, and it really harbors your aggression when you don't have those points in Blink. Uh, it, it's not a one-hit, or not, not a uh, one-point wonder kind of a Blink yeah. ability. It scales so well, not only in cooldown, but also the range. Um, it, it just really changes the state of yeah. co-ops. Two's so. kind of like the magic number, I feel, as yeah. far as the early game's concerned. And when you get that second point in Shadow Strike, you don't get that second point in Blink until level 8, which is yep. quite a long time to wait, unless he skips one point in Scream, but... Which or is, Sonic Wave, but you don't really want to go do that. Yeah, you, you really don't. That's, that's, your, that's your bread and butter for picking up those kills. And We'll see how he does it. Now, KYXY in the bottom lane, uh, doing pretty well in last hits, 26 and 9. But CK is our last hit leader here. Lakel's doing just fine in the uh, dire safe lane. And uh, kind of in free farm heaven for the most part. Nature's Prophet not able to do too much to contest his farm. And uh, Ohio did spend a lot of time leaving the lane, pushing bottom, and uh, helping to set up those ganks. So yep. worked out well for Titan, but it did open up a lot of room for Chaos Knight, who's already got his power treads up. Uh, with another 500 gold to play with, so yeah. he is not hurting for farm in this early game. I think Ahaya could have a minus by now. The phase boots combined uh, with the the gold he's got left over, if he'd wanted to, he could have a six minute minus as an off lane profit, which I think is probably what he's thinking. Like, man, I got these phase boots, but <laughs> he goes top, and sure you've got phase boot movement speed, but with sanking CK can kill you regardless. So yeah, I think he may look back on this game and think, well, I probably should have just done a minus rush. Yeah, I mean, he can rotate into the lane when they're pushing into the tower and use those creeps to take some pressure off and maybe grab some last hits, but. Um, they don't have a ward, uh, pardon me, blocking the pool right now, so there's pretty good lane control for Myth. And that just makes it so hard for Nature's Prophet to really do anything up here, and I think he's going to have to retreat into the jungle. Uh, Yamate kind of gets a kill. playing with fire here a little bit. He's up all by his lonesome, but he'll just clear out this hard camp, and he'll be just fine. Is a proper TP rune. ready if he finds anyone. But. Yeah. And, uh oh, we see a ping coming out. And maybe this centaur could be in some trouble. The hasted tiny will wander his way over. He's level 7. And now uh, a great hoof stomp. That'll buy him some time. And he'll make it back to the tower. Yep. He'll get out of there. The treant's scouting him out, though. Nice play from Ahaya, just having these treants move all around the map. But mm -hmm. 
Nice uh, mobile wards there. Not too much more is going to come from that. Hyatt picks up his gloves of hate, so he'll go back for that minus now. Tiny finds Queen of Pain. That's a oh, full HP Queen of Pain burst down. All right, not out of the clear yet. Sand King and Centaur are coming in. There's the Burrow Strike. Hoof Stomp, double edge available. Lakel is joining the party as well, and Yamate will pay. Boom Bell picks up the last hit, but... It's worth it. Yeah, still yeah. a nice kill. Catches that Queen of Pain, and just great positioning. Having that crafty little uh, kind of hiding behind the tree line here and waiting for Quap to walk by. Very nicely executed. Yeah, uh, Tiny with a much longer respawn time, but that's because Tiny's two levels higher than this Queen of Pain as a, all of a sudden. So, yeah. really big kill for the Tiny. He does go down, but that's a kill being split between three heroes. So, yeah. all that solo experience really yeah. makes a big disparity. And with that, I mean, Myth Trust know it. They're going to pull a rotation, and it will be Wisp CK now in the mid lane. And we'll see where Quap goes once she respawns up. She's headed right up to the top lane, already engaging onto Ohio, thinking about dying, uh, diving this tower. She did blink forward, so the Sprout comes out, taking <laughs> tower shots. That'll be an easy kill as Yamade nice. ports in. <laughs> Nicely done. Great synergy from Titan, but just a great read from Ohio. Said, oh, you want to blink aggressively into the tower? That's an easy sprout. Thank you yeah. very much. And that's, that's a really nice little pickup here. We're still not level 6, so no relocate options for Mythtrust. Mythtrust did get the D ward in the mid lane on the hill with the sentry ward, but uh, beyond that, they, they're not really getting too much to go their way. Just the one kill to their name. Mm -hmm. and fake TP mid. <laughs> That's one thing Ohio does a lot. Those fake TPs, and he's constantly faking him out, making the opponents think twice. That constant reminder of, hey, I could be coming in at any point. You remember that when you pick on my friends, you spotty dogs. And, uh, Are we going to see a, I think we're going to see a Blink Dagger Tiny. It's going to be a return to the old school Tiny. All right. This is your TI1 era Tiny of yeah. style of play. I mean, even back in Dota 1, this was the only way Tiny was played. He was never played as a carry. That's... Because the Aghanim Scepter upgrade was a fairly newish mm -hmm. thing. At, uh, it came a lot later on. To uh, point out my Han Trash history once again, that's that's how people played the Tiny equivalent. It was all about the solo mid. There was yeah. no Ags upgrade. So the Pebbles, yep. was it? Yeah. Pebbles was his name. Yeah, just all about uh, that burst damage mid. And in the meta, when it was all about uh, the Int heroes in the mid lane, you know, your Queen of Pains and, and whatnots, your Death Prophets, Tiny was bursty enough that he could really shut them down. So this really is a blast from the past here. You know who played the mean Pebbles? Uh, no Tail. No. Slick. Slick. Oh, Slicks. I love Slicks. When's he going to start playing Dota? He's playing Dota now. He plays for Team Immunity in Australia. Uh oh. Ohio in some trouble. We'll talk about Slicks in a moment here. Myth will finally get some kills up on the board, but it's they'll pay for it here. Oh, 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 double kill for KYXY. Oh, Morphin gets it too. Yeah. Wow. What a disaster. That was huge. That tiny yeah. the perfect combo on both the heroes. Morphling cleans up. So much AOE damage. So, um, is he on a real competitive team? Though I'm actually yeah. a really big Dyer's Slicks fan. He was one of my. He, I always thought he was one of the most impressive Dyer's heroes of newer players in individual skill. Oh, I, just yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't follow him, but mechanics. like everything I heard was like Slicks is like yeah. top three. He's like a de he's like the dandy of Pond basically. Yeah, he he really is. He uh, just just an amazing player. And he was one of those uh, drafters where he would draft and the team would draft in silence. It was Slicks did the drafting. You, okay. You do not question Slicks, and he was kind of known as that kind of mastermind drafter, and um, just a, a player to keep an eye out for. He's, yeah, he's plagued he's by Australian internet though, or New Zealand internet. I Australian. Where he's, from. he's recently they've recently signed with Team Immunity, who's like a big Australian organization. So that okay. was like just maybe three or three weeks ago. So ah. he's made the full switch over to Dota 2 now. Awesome. Uh, that is a player to keep an eye out for, for those of you who have no idea who we're talking about. Trent Tucker, a.k.a. Slicks. Just you wait. TI-5, I, I, TI here we come. He's a really <laughs> cool guy as well. Yeah. I, I, this, I, but before I even knew him, he, I, I ran into him at DreamHack when I was casting. He was playing Han there. I was playing Dota 2, and he came out to me. He's like, he was a bit drunk, let's be honest. But he's like, dude, <laughs> I really love your casting, man. Like, I respect you so much. I'm like... I, I, I realized who he was because uh, because it was like an Aussie was playing Han there, so I knew what team he was on and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was just so funny. The guy was just yeah. being like the nicest guy ever. Like, he, I mean, he obviously he followed Dota to a bit because he was good friends with some of the other guys. Where, where do you think the Han meta came from? They just yeah. stole it from Dota. <laughs> Chaos Knight gets picked off in the top lane here. Wrath of Nature flies from the Nature's Prophet as uh, Tony the Tiny rotates in and Titan find another pretty easy kill here. And this uh, this tiny play seems to be working pretty well for him. They've got about a 5,000 gold lead, 3,000 experience lead, and Yamate sitting level nine. He's tied for the highest with the morph blink, and they're just in great shape. This is <laughs> this is when playing tiny is fun. You get a blink dagger around that 10 minute mark, and you just run around comboing people. I think this build's totally viable still. Unfortunately, the mid lane's always a bit tough to do. We will see an initiation. Speaking of mid lane on next team, he's going to go down, but yeah. it's an AA kill, and they use a stampede. And it, meanwhile, so. up top, uh, Yamate actually finds the Wisp and is able to combo him wow. down, so yeah, it's a one for one across the map. Not even Man. too bad. Playing Blink Tiny is so much fun. Like I'm surprised more teams haven't tried doing this, and they're going to find another big gun. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even use the Avalanche for that one. Yeah, that was just a uh, magic missile into toss, and just 
Take him down. Line him up and knock him down. This is some serious nostalgia here. Yamate playing mid tiny. And the entire time KOXY is just farming at bottom lane. He's gonna. Ooh, not gonna commit to this tower. We'll see it probably get denied. Nope, missed deny from the sensor. And now KYXY, he does have a replicate okay. out. And actually a TP in from Ohio. Nope, it's gonna cancel it. He's just trying to scare him back. But yep, morphing the strength. And where is oh, the replicate? Oh, there it is. Oh. Yep. So okay. he'll hop out. And Ohio still cancel casting uh, that TP in. And won't hop to it. Makes the smart play. So this is great news. One of the big weaknesses with Morphling is the early game. Oh, you know, bottom lane. Oh, oh <laughs> Tiny coming in. He'll, he'll combo down the Centaur. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, one of the problems with Morphling is he takes a couple items to really come online. Usually you need that uh, Lincolns first, then you transition into your E-Blade or whatever your hard-hitting item is. But they've already knocked down four towers, 9-3 uh, to three here at the 12-minute mark. Morphling's got a 12-minute Lincolns. I mean, KYXY is in great shape. He's top of the uh, net worth chart, and this is where Morphling can be really scary. Still not a big fan of the hero personally, but if if he has a good early game, then that's that's where he struggles. So it's yeah. looking looking to be a good mid game at the very least here for Team Not Titan. just farm, but getting kills, getting tower gold. All of this is just tied in snowballing out of control. And Yamate leading the way. He's now got trades to go with his blink dagger. He may go back towards the Ag Scepter just because it is a pretty cool item. Uh, unless he goes for the full four staff Yule Scepter style of play, but I think I don't know. The trades kind of signal that he does want to go for the Ag Scepter with the extra attack speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ohio he did end up going back for that Midas. So uh, you're right. Maybe he was uh, regretting his choices just a little bit there, going for the phase boots first. Does uh, look like he'll transition into the Necro Namicon. Nothing too surprising about that. Medallion already out on the Vengeful Spirit, so Roche. Will be an option uh, if Titan find an opportunity or grab a couple of kills. Should be a pretty easy yeah. transition. And that Hyo's micro is just so crazy. He just had a treant like all the way behind this T2 mid tower, scouting out mid trust. He the way he uses treants is just so effective. He'll send like so many off in different directions, just trying to get vision for his team. And when you get a blink tiny who can follow up with that vision, get kills. It's a fantastic way to play. Mm -hmm. And they're on the high ground oh, here. Now. They're going to catch somebody. There's a magic missile out on Lakels. And Tiny just doing <laughs> too much damage. <laughs> that ice with blast. the double kill. That's a value ice blast. Oh, boy. That's a dead tier 2 top tower, I think. So KYX will give himself even more money to go with this. Yeah, absolutely. So Titan, they're just running away with this, gods. They've already got a 10,000 gold lead. And it's about to be a bit more as they take out the top tier two. They have about a 7,500 experience lead. They are just in great shape across the board. They essentially won all of their lanes. And like you pointed out in the drafting stage, this is just classic Titan. Win the laning stage and then just dominate through the mid game. And we talked about how difficult it is for CK to play from behind. And I think suffice it to say, he is pretty far behind. 0, 3, and 2. Um, his farm was okay, but now he's just got drums, ogre club, and he's just so low impact. Yeah. Well, we'll see the T2 mid tower go down, and this is your last out of tower. So Titan can then pull back tech road, get the ages, think about pushing high ground if they want to. So. What items do Myth actually have? They haven't even finished this BKB on on the uh, CK, the Queen of Pain's just sitting on treads, basically. There's nothing Myth Trust actually have in terms of items to take any fight. Mm -hmm. Roshan will be for Titan. There you go. All six outer towers Taking down in the first 15 minutes. Yeah. That Taking guys a blink, but that's that's like such a... I mean, he's only got a level uh, 1 epicenter. He's yeah. level 7. It's it's something, but it's not that scary. Blink up on the centaur. That's maybe a little bit more scary. They're okay. starting to get those core items. So they get double blinks, which is... It's almost... It just feels like it's too late. Yeah. Look at how far ahead Titan now, which is suddenly 15k gold. Yeah. Double blinks may not be enough. Roche and six towers in 15 minutes is... Pretty devastating. The 11 to 3 is pretty solid, but now 15,000 gold leads, more about 10,000 experience. It just keeps getting worse. Yep. Tiny illusions flying all over the map, and it looks like they're going to consider going for a push here. Hyo's just going to sit back. He is going to go for that Necromon book. And that's the way you end this game. Like, if you want to be able to push high ground, you need the Necro books to actually help out, tank up some damage, and dish out more damage as well. So maybe they'll make a go with just the necro 2 but necro 3 is really where this push gets strong not to mention tiny is going for an ag scepter so yep. i think tiny isn't all about going carry here it's about going sieging and to siege the enemy base the ag scepter is the way to go mm -hmm. yeah he just destroys structures so quickly with it it's uh i really like the tank uh the tiny ags upgrade i i just like the the dynamic it adds to the hero it makes him so much more versatile and Turns him into th this sort of, you can still play him this style, the kind of, uh, I don't, what's the right word for it? Not this, 
isn't much of a carry style. The solo it's mid more. ganker style. Yeah, ganking. Just uh, I, yeah. bursty, I'm going to get a few levels up and uh, drop my combo all over your face while you're still under-leveled kind of tiny. But gives it that versatility where you can kind of play both. And uh, One of my favorite Ags upgrades. Plus, I just like the way it looks. I think it's. I, I like <laughs> the ones that have a, a good graphic. You know, he picks up a tree and he's yeah. branching people all over the place. It's... There's nothing better than watching Tiny with an Ag Scepter beat on a Treant Protector. There's just something about it that really, <laughs> really makes me chuckle. But uh, Invisible Yamato and uh, Mythdress are actually smoked up and almost get revealed, but Yamate just not quite in the right place at the right time. Okay, well, XY, he picks up his Eagle Song. So his E-Blade, only 1,500 gold away. Wow. That, it's going to be like a 20-minute E-Blade, Lincoln. And that's scary. I mean, Morphling shotgun that early on is scary, but when paired with a Tiny, if Morphling doesn't have the damage to finish him off, you better believe Tiny will yeah. uh, with that E-Blade buff. So, Mythrust are pretty screwed. Yep. Like they, they still have a chance because of their strong team fight with the blinks, with the all the ulties. But at the end of the day, Titan have mech. Like AA said, look, I'm not even going for Ag Scepter just because the one way we lose this game is if we start losing team fights and. Aghanim Scepter is not going to change a team fight, whereas a mech could help you stay alive in a team fight. So I think this mech build was the right way to go for X team. Yeah, I, they, they've got more than enough damage. And not that the Egg Scepter would have been bad, but yeah, having that kind of versatility, not putting all of your eggs in one basket. And mech is just such a good item. It's yeah. such a cost effective item. And I don't know. Every so often you see one of these games where neither side grabs a mech and they're killing each other at the 12 minute mark. And I'm thinking, why do you not have a mech right now? It would turn the yeah. tide in these team fights. So I uh, definitely like the uh, the thought process there for Titan. They just had an interesting use of the stampede. I think they were they scattered somebody out in the trees here and they were trying to catch him. Yeah, but they ended up being a wasted uh, centaur cooldown. It was a big maybe and didn't actually end up happening. So uh, Titan are happy to wait. They've got this Aegis for like another three-ish minutes. So they'll wait that they'll wait maybe one or two more minutes and in that time they just get the Necro three, the Ag Scepter from Tiny three hundred away and the E Blade six hundred away. So they'll have E Blade plus Ag Scepter. And still, like, a good minute and a half, maybe two minutes on this Aegis, which will be yeah. when they try to go high ground, I think. Yeah, that's that golden timing window. More playing, yeah, he's at about 1,100 gold or so. And Titan are still in a pretty aggressive position. They won't force a fight on the high ground, but if they can find a good initiation here, they will certainly take it. And they can still pick up kills pretty easily. Lincoln's gets popped by the Queen of Pain, but uh, no follow-up comes out. So. Titan recognizing they have Myth Trust just completely cornered in their base, and as long as they can keep... Pushing the lanes in, clearing out the dire jungle, they can kind of slow bleed them here. We'll see Yamate get initiated on down in the bottom lane. Myth Trust finding a good opening here, and that will end his mega kill streak. Unfortunately, that gold bounty goes the way of Wisp, but some and space creation comes out. And yeah, it'll end up being a tiny for tier 3. No glyph is available. And, um, I mean, Titan is strong enough that they could potentially take a fight here. Uh, extinct in a little bit of trouble will actually fall. Chaos Knight gets that kill. So it will be two heroes in exchange for this tier 3 tower in the mid lane. Not over quite yet. Sonic Wave does a lot of damage. Net in big trouble. Will throw a magic missile out on the Queen of Pain, but does die. Ends up playing more of a sacrificial lamb roll. Wisp does fall as uh, the waveform back from KYXY does connect. So three heroes in exchange for one and a tier 3 tower. Not the best for Titan. Maybe a little yeah, sloppy, but well, still not a bad exchange. It's good for Myth. They yeah. managed to punish Dyer's Yamate. Who's normally fairly safe with his play. He gets caught out alone and... From there, then, then the supports are vulnerable. Like, you don't have Tiny in these fights, you can actually go aggressive. Morphling without E-Blade doesn't have the killing power. Uh, so without Tiny there, they knew they could just go go into a fight, kill the supports. They don't go for Morphling because he's just unkillable with Aegis, Lincolns, and all that. But they kill the heroes they can get, lose a tier mm -hmm. 3 tower, but that's a, as good as it's going to get for Mythcrust. And that's the kind of thing, they just have to keep rinse repeating that kind of play there if they want to get back in this game. Yeah, now, what happened to KYXY's goal? Okay, good, he did buy the E-Blade, yeah. there we go. I, you know, I looked at it, and I think I just had a, a dirt moment there. So, uh, yeah, the E-Blade will be coming out, and Tiny pretty darn close to that Ags. Um, actually, is he is he 900 off, or is it all sitting on the Courier? I think he still needs that one last one. Nope, there it is, it is on the Courier. It's okay, yeah, it's sorry, it was a, a dirt moment there. So E-Blade and Egg Scepter are now complete for Titan. They have those core items, and now things are scary for Mythtrust. That's <laughs> all I was trying to get at there. Aegis about to expire, 30 seconds on that. Okay. So and BKB out on CK, actually, that's not bad. Titan may try force these Raxxas, though, even though it's only 30 seconds. Morphling may lose his Aegis mid-fight, but as long as he's ready for that, he should be pretty good. There's a Glyph that'll buy some more time. And oh, we'll see this adaptive strike. He's not looking for a true shotgun. If he's, oh, he, he just throws a shotgun out, just forces pop back a little one. Yep. They have, they, they, their priority is the Raxxas, not the actual kills here. Mm -hmm. They force attack. out the Glyph straight away. It is a Necro book level 3 for Nature's Profit, so he's doing a good job pushing them around. Blink forward from Centaur, hoof stomp on the KYXY. 
but there won't be much follow-up after that. Wrath of Nature just chunking the Chaos Knight. He'll get knocked down to half health before he can even BKB. Range Drax still alive, but Titan got what they came for, and they'll just chip away at the range. Didn't back out. They, 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 once the H6 buys, they say, let's just get out of here. Mm -hmm. we, there's a chance they can burst down the Morphling from full HP if they get the perfect combo with Epicenter Blink, Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave, and... I think they wait for the next Roshan, and then they do the same thing onto either bottom or top lane. Uh, and during, during the, while they're waiting for Roshan to respawn, they can still look for fights and ganks using smokes here, maybe, but for the most part, they'll just farm another item or two. Extinct Sing on like 800 HP, he probably wants to pick up an Ogre Club or a Point Booster to start tanking up a little bit, work mm -hmm. on the Ag Scepter, and that should be fairly easy to do. Yeah, we'll see what Ohio wants to pick up next on this Nature's Prophet. 2,500 gold in savings after that level 3 Necro book, and Mythtrust are finally starting to get some of those scary core items. That's an Orchid out on Queen of Pain. 22 minutes, not really an ideal timing, but uh, still a, a useful item that will help in these team fights. Sand King's still only level 8, even though he had a well-timed Blink Dagger. Level 1 Epicenter just, at, at this point, really isn't that intimidating. Yeah, I agree. And it looks like Tiny, there we go. There's the smoke I was talking about. They're going to try to find some pickups here using this Blink on Tiny. I, th I think Mythtrust, uh, they know they're just going to send their own bases, four or five here. They can't really do anything apart from remain grouped up. And if they find this three hero unit, they could actually get some kills if Titan aren't going to commit proper to TPing oh, in. And how unlucky. They'll rotate into the mid lane out of the jungle just as Myth yeah. smoke up and rotate into their own jungle. So just a little bit of bad luck there. They won't find what they're looking for. And, uh, well, both teams will kind of walk away unscathed. Titan will have a five man rotation towards the bottom lane. Ohio sitting in the well and will probably TP in as they get yeah. close to the base. They know the glyph is down, so they can just kind of chip at this uh, this tower and not overcommit. If Mythtrust try to hold, take a uh, fight. Top or lane. They're actually out of Dyer's position to defend. Yeah, just chip. Attack. They will have TPs back, and actually, Sand King, yep, he still has his TP scroll. Hasn't even used it. This tower will go down to half health before they're even in a position to take a team fight. And this is just, this is not ideal for oh, our dire Sand side. Sand King has no epicenter. The Necrobook units being microed so well by Haya. And Lakels, he's coming in the front lines. Dyer's Centaur, he will get destroyed by the Ancient Apparition after getting E-bladed. EO falls as well. BKB on the Chaos Knight. There's the ultimate coming out. Throws the uh, Chaos Bolt out on the Nature's Prophet. Nether Swap and GG. Well played. Titan will take game one in this series. Only 15 to 6, but a dominating performance in 24 minutes of game one. It's, Ohio does something, like he plays Nature's Prophet like in just generally different to most players. Like most people there would just have the Necro book right clicking away on the tower because Necro 3s do good damage for sieging towers, but Ohio right. says nope. Going to send them a good 800 range behind the tower. As soon as Sand King comes in, he right clicks and mana burns to Sand King. And Sand King, he doesn't have arcane boots. He doesn't have the mana to get off anything in the fight. Not to mention, he can't actually hide as well because of the vision they give. So he gets unable to blink in. He can't do anything in that fight because mm -hmm. of the micro from Ohio. Yeah, and this is one of these games. I mean, we, we talked about the strategy right in the picking phase. That is a classic Titan game right there. Yeah. Uh, they get heroes that they're comfortable with. They pick relatively strong lanes. They do an early dive, knock down that tower. Nature's Prophet comes in, and all of a sudden, you've got four heroes in one lane. They use that early tower gold to get a little edge and use that little edge to get a bigger edge. And then before you know it, they're 10,000 gold up at the 10-minute mark, and um, Myth are in, in rough shape. So. Yeah. The question is, what can Myth do in this next game coming up to prevent that from happening I, again? I mean, I think the big problem was there. They went all. They were expecting a tiny whisk. They didn't get it. The other thing is they've got to just respect Titan's playstyle, which is dominating the laning stage. I think they need to pick stronger laning heroes for themselves. Yeah. Uh, the Centaur offlane is standard stuff. I think their safe lane was a bit weak. Uh, the CK, I yeah. mean, a force into a wisp CK was ultimately why they lost this game, in my opinion. That, that's a really good point. The way Titan played that, you see the wisp, and they said, you know what, let's take the tiny, and then they did something wh very unconventional for this meta. Tiny solo mid against Queen of yeah. Pain. As we mentioned many a time, a blast from the past, an old piece of the meta, but worked I very well. I think Mithra still could have responded there differently. Like, they should have gone for a wisp Luna, which is fairly mm. s standard. Wisp combo, and I think is quite strong. It's a more passive style of play, and then they get a mid hero who's a tempo controller, something like a Dragon Knight, something like a Puck. Even I something a little less com like a, a Wisp uh, Storm Spirit could have worked, yeah. but there are a lot of other heroes that can, as you said, kind of control the tempo a bit better than that CK that still can kind of carry and scale. I'm not a fan of the CK currently. Yeah, Neither are you, no. so. <laughs> no, not at all. So. We're in agreement. All right, guys, we'll move into game number two here. Uh, we'll see if Myth Trust can take us into an ace match or if Titan can t take it with a quick 2 0. Thank you for joining us here for the inaugural More Dota 2 action coming up after this break.